Hello, everyone. It's Pietro here, and welcome back to another edition of SwissBorg's Market Outlook. Five years ago today, SwissBorg had their ICO, meaning that CHSB, the native token, was launched to the public. This ICO was a massive success, and it shows from where we are today. With the amount of developments that have happened and how we are positioned today, it's very different to the majority of the projects that launched back in 2017-2018. In fact, 99% of those projects have either failed completely or have become irrelevant in the space. It's only fitting that five years after that day and after that successful launch, we are now presenting the Series A, which is also open to the community, and it's an extremely, extremely exciting moment for us. Five years later, this means that today we are unharmed by any of the scandals that have happened. If we just look at 2022 with what happened with Celsius, Luna Terra, FTX, and Alameda, Swissborg survived and came past all of that. We remained unharmed and we remain the premier trusted partner in the space as the community shows with their feedback and as we show with our activities and how we operate all together. Therefore, opening up the Series A to the community is a natural step. And it's a natural step for you as a user to go from token holder to community member to finally partner. If you're not already informed on SwissWorks present and future vision, the seven layers show the unique positioning of SwissWorks in the space. The layers presented, each of which have a different purpose in the crypto space, range from payments to our smart engine, to the multitude of earned strategies in the DeFi space, to thematics, which are crypto ETFs, crypto bundles. Now, finally, the launch pad that we announced that will lead to us launching a multitude of projects through the Swiss work ecosystem to finally, in the future, tokenized assets and Swiss work smart mandate. This is a multitude of features that are all simultaneously being worked on and show why we have a unicorn status in the space and why this is just going to become more and more prominent. So don't miss out on this special opportunity. The Swiss Borg Series A early sale registration ends in less than two days. So don't miss out on being a part of the present and the future of the crypto space. Of course, the FTX saga has not concluded and the scandal is anywhere but close to being done. Therefore, I also wanted to give you an update on what's been going on and some of the more interesting aspects that have happened recently. So therefore, this will be an important update because after FTX filed for bankruptcy, slowly for more information was being revealed. Now, of course, more and more people are informed with FTX, with potentially what happened, and have started looking closer into the details. And a lot of more additional information has surfaced since then. But most importantly is that Sam Bankman-Fried, which is the founder of FTX and ex-CEO, has gone on an interview tour. And I call it an interview tour, not because it's specifically a tour set up to do anything special, but it's because he's been going on a series of interviews or Twitter spaces to discuss any question that people might have and to maybe discuss what happened and what led us to this moment. Now, this tour has led a lot of people to be skeptical because what is the motivation is he just trying to save his image? And what is the actual intention of going public? Now, SBF, so Sam Bankman-Fried, has gone public now on numerous platforms. And frankly, when the more I read about it, legal esper experts are shocked by this move. They're shocked because without any legal advice, without any, let's say, additional preparation for these interviews and for these Twitter spaces, so it being a free-for-all where anyone could ask any questions, legal expert experts are shocked that SBF has put himself in this position. Uh, this nonetheless has been the case, but it's important to understand mostly how he conducted himself in these interviews and what he decided to share, which is frankly not much at all. So these interview tours started with 
the New York Times Deal Book Summit that was presented by Andrew Sorkin. And Andrew Sorkin had an interview with, with SBF where he presented a multitude of questions, but these questions were fairly surface level, trying to understand how Alameda and FTX interacted and what exactly went on. But SBF uh, mostly disregarded the questions and just went on rants explaining how much he didn't know uh, and the fact that he wasn't extremely liable for what happened. A following interview with Good Morning America led to a bit more detail, uh, but still SBF was unsure of the details. He would answer certain questions on what he knew, but for the majority of the time, he just said he didn't have sufficient information to answer at the time, showing that it's more just to, uh, just to be out there and be public and not hide anymore rather than answering questions in more detail. But probably most interestingly is that SPF joined a number of Twitter spaces. On these Twitter spaces came the heavier questions because the Twitter spaces were not organized by, let's say, professional interviewers or people that came with a specific agenda and tried to get certain answers. These Twitter spaces were more free for all, joined by thousands of people with some key figures in the space that decided to ask questions. The questions were very hard hitting, trying to understand that if SPF really didn't know anything in terms of Alameda, how that's possible, being the founder of FTX, uh, being, being essentially the supervisory figure in all of that. Now, nothing at all came from these interviews other than SBF explaining to himself, uh, explaining to us that he doesn't know that much, that he wasn't trying to, uh, to do anything fraudulent, uh, and that he had no intention to steal people's money uh, and use it uh, for extremely high, uh, risky and fraudulent activities, which is taking people's money and investing it for their profits. Now, nothing came from any of these interviews to the point where it's additional information that could be useful. And so really the intention here, it seems from SBF's side, is merely to excuse himself, to show that there was no bad intention and he always had uh, the people's be best interest in mind, which is of course questionable given what we know at this point. The main question that stems from these interviews though is where is Caroline from Alameda? Where is the head from Alameda uh, that potentially is the person that might know a lot more information than SBF because Alameda were, of course, uh, trading illegally with FTX's users' funds. There are speculations that Caroline from Alameda is currently cooperating with the FBI. She's been seen close to FBI headquarters, uh, really by almost paparazzi at this point. Uh, therefore, it's possible that she is colluding with the FBI to provide as much information as possible uh, to pardon herself from what has happened. What will come from all of this? Uh, it's clear that SBF joining interviews will not lead to any other substantial additional information. Uh, and perhaps it is very necessary for us to hear from Caroline from Alameda to understand really how much SBF knew and what exactly went on. So what will come from this? It's currently unclear, but as always, I will keep you updated and inform you more next week. This week, a new AI chatbot went extremely viral, and I wanted to mention it and discuss it a little bit to show also the potential of what's going on here. This new AI chatbot is called ChatGPT. It's from OpenAI, which is an R&D company uh, that aims to ensure that AI and the future of AI will benefit humans altogether. This new chatbot allows for seamless and smooth conversations with AI. It's open to the public, so open to anyone really. So you can access it yourself, try out, give it commands, and see how ChatGPT answers to your command or to your request. ChatGPT has no personality, and it combines knowledge from various sources, as well as training from humans, to enhance the way that it answers. So what it does really is that it answers questions, it even admits mistakes and can challenge incorrect premises that you give it, as well as remembering what you told it earlier in the conversation. 
the kind of things you can request from ChatGPT are, let's say, for example, explain string theory for me in simple terms, or write, a, a, give me some rap lyrics about a random topic, like, for example, the solar system in the style of a famous rapper, like Eminem, for example. And this has been showcased already by some people that did exactly this uh, and got incredible results from it, really. So why am I presenting this? Uh, why? Because it's not directly related, let's say, to the blockchain in crypto space and more to AI. But I wanted to touch upon it because it shows just how far AI has gone in a minor aspect of AI as well. So we are often oblivious to the technological advancements of AI and to exactly the possibilities that AI is leading to and how far this technology has gone. ChatGPT, although being a very simple chatbot, shows just how far this potential can go. A potential that, of course, might have future interactions for the crypto and the blockchain space. And in the same way, it creates a parallel on the technological advancements of the blockchain space. Because, of course, most people will be oblivious or will be blind to how the, the blockchain is technologically advancing, how the DeFi space is technologically advancing. And therefore, it's always uh, important to have something that people can relate to or where people can easily see how certain technologies are developing. And this is exactly the case for this new AI chatbot, which has very, very strong potential uh, in whatever industries or in societies in general, when you look at it uh, objectively or from the zoomed out perspective. So there are, of course, limitations to this chatbot as of right now. For example, it can give incorrect information or it can even sometimes provide harmful content, all of which OpenAI, the company behind it, uh, is aware of. And they mentioned that, of course. So it's, it's nowhere close to perfect, uh, but it already shows you the potential of what an artificial intelligence chatbot could, could look like in terms of interacting with us humans. It really shows us where the future lies. And I think that to get a full understanding of this, uh, go on OpenAI's website, ask for a request from ChatGPT's uh, bot, and explore the responses you get and what you could get out of it. It's extremely interesting. Uh, and of course, it shows us in a world driven by technology, as is also the blockchain space, just how much is being done in the background. Last but not least, is Elon Musk working on a Twitter coin? Uh, this could seem extremely plausible, especially given Elon Musk's interest in the crypto space, everything that's happened with Dogecoin and Elon Musk uh, in the last few years. And of course, now uh, Elon Musk having acquired Twitter. Now, this new Twitter coin was leaked by a person that also leaked the latest changes of Twitter, which includes Twitter spaces, which includes also the $8 a month blue check mark that you can get on Twitter. Therefore, it's not just a random speculation here. It's extremely plausible that this leak is related to uh, a development that will likely happen for Twitter. Now, this is extremely interesting because, of course, it gives even more utility and even more, um, let's say, presence and exposure of crypto in larger industries, like for example, social media and having a direct integration of crypto in social media. Uh, therefore, I think that very soon we'll be able to know if this was just a rumor or if this is actually something that is being worked on. Regardless, it's very interesting uh, to see crypto being adopted in various spaces in our societies and social media seemed like a natural transition for, for crypto to head into, like, for example, Instagram uh, and the interaction between being able to expose NFTs on there. Uh, so therefore, let's see if Twitter coin will actually happen. And let's see uh, what the pros and cons really are once and if this is confirmed eventually. So that was all for me this week. Thank you very much for listening. I hope everything has been informative as usual. Uh, go check out any of the things that I've mentioned here both the Series A as well as the launch pad, what's happened with FTX and the various interviews by SBF. And finally, check out Chat GPT as well. 
Thanks for listening and take care.